Two hours ago, I looked like a 12 year old boy. Welcome to Millennials Looking for Mentors. I'm Klein Aliardi. And I'm Elise Notariani. And thank you to Jefferson Health New Jersey for sponsoring this episode. Today we're talking with Kate Scott. She's the television play-by-play announcer for the Sixers. Who won their game on Monday, by the way. Yep, we're going to win on Thursday. And we're just going to keep winning. And we're going to get the championship. And we're not going to lose like Philly. And it's all going to be okay. <laughs> Hold on, you got to be a little bit nicer to them. They've been I'm, pretty far. I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. Sad. I was at game six and it was so exciting and then broke my heart immediately. So I get it. And we're not going to do that with the Sixers. We're issue. not. We're going to go to a ton of Sixers games and be super pumped. Um, especially when you hear Kate talk about all of it. It's, it's cool. It's cool. So yeah, thank you so much for getting on with us today. I love that it sounds like you have just like a day of podcast <laughs> i try to line them up because i am not this is my least favorite part of television having to do i didn't even finish my hair today because i was running lakes my dog anyway um but doing makeup like i was joking with the previous person two hours ago i looked like a 12 year old boy like <laughs> down i had to run to home depot to get my contract or something so i this is not my normal look i i, I like to say it's kind of superman-esque multiple people meet me and have no idea that I am the same person that they watch call Sixers games. So uh, anyway, we wanted to start with uh, what was going through your head when you got the Sixers play by play job. Uh, can we cuss on this podcast? Yes. <laughs> Go for it. I love uh, that question. <laughs> holy shit. I got the call as I was boarding a flight to call a college football game. My boss, Sean Alexiak, uh, from NBC Sports Philly. I saw his number and I was, I convinced myself that it was going to be, thank you so much. Gosh, we had such a great time meeting you. We think you have such a bright future. Uh, it's just, we're, we're not going to hire you, but you were wonderful and best of luck. I'd convinced myself because I didn't think there was any way in heck that any professional sports team was going to hire a woman to be the voice of their team. Instead, he sounded really cheery. He was like, hey, Kate, how are you doing? Uh, good, good, Sean, how are you? And a few minutes later, he said, well, uh, we usually call your agent because I, I have an agent who usually acts as the go-between with myself and my bosses. Uh, but but this was, yeah, we're so excited uh, that we wanted to tell you personally um, that, you know, we've been through the process with a ton of people and you're it we would love for you to be the next voice of the Philadelphia 76ers. And I'm <laughs> standing in some random airport. I stepped out of line. We were actually boarding the plane. Oh my God. And I think people probably thought that somebody was dying or something awful had happened. <laughs> I said, wow, that's, uh, I'm at a loss for words right now, Sean. Thank you so much. Um, Obviously, I'm going to have to talk to my wife to see if, <laughs> you know, got to talk about things over the weekend, even though I should have said, hell yeah, let's get started right now. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but yeah, so all of that was going through my mind because I, I truly did not think, uh, I thought they were going to take me to the end of the process and pat themselves on the back. And mm. I was going to have to go back to what I was doing before, which I loved and which was great. And I was just going to have to keep grinding, but mm. uh, they took a risk on this out of the box person and uh, i'm having a blast so far love it was your That's wife wild. as excited i mean i'm assuming your wife was like hell yes let's do this <laughs> well she was like uh she's born and raised in the bay area which is where she's lived oh. for the like, 20 years and we've lived and been together for the past 16 so this was a massive change for her yeah. but she knew i told her on our second date like hey i'm gonna be a, a sports broadcaster and a big time one uh so we may be moving all over the country and she was like yeah yeah kid whatever um so like, she yeah no totally exactly that that's gonna happen knew that this had the potential of happening and it was actually it. pretty surprising that we didn't have to move earlier in my career but uh yeah so she said okay I guess we're moving to Philly so yeah she was on board pretty quick too oh my god I think that if I were you I would have gotten on that plane I would have sat down and just like given my neighbor just a little poke oh, you know what just happened <laughs> you know no and instead like, I just why, all why capitals texted a lot of people bad and words. then shut your phone off for a and that was the thing. so I, I was like I, we're, we're taking off I have to I, so I, I when we landed uh there was a, a lot of responses yeah. and everybody hated me so so when it got announced what was that like seeing all of 
everybody react to it because you got some strong reactions oh, in oh, a yeah. lot of different ways <laughs> oh yeah I mean first uh female play-by-play -play announcer in Philly uh just the second one to be announced my buddy Lisa Byington who's the voice of the Bucks had just been announced the week prior so we both experienced our first year of calling pro sport day in and day out for a team together last year which wow. was so helpful but yeah. we were the first two out of any sports league in the the country potentially the world but definitely in the united states uh that's a big deal so i was expecting the worst i always brace for the worst again i was bracing for the you're not you're not the voice of the sixers i am always prepared for the worst um but the response was actually overwhelmingly positive which was amazing and i like to think speaks to my hard work and the relationships i've built mm -hmm. and the stuff that i've done before this um there was yeah plenty of blowback but I like to say so much of it wasn't about me, Kate Scott. It was in any aspect of life, new and different and change. Like think about just us. If we have to change something in our own lives, that's really difficult. And then all of a sudden, something that you love, Sixers basketball, has a new voice. And it's always been a white man calling it before. And now it's a woman She's not from here. She has a wife. Like there's so many different <laughs> aspects of it. So yeah. I just tried to remind myself of that that day. And since that day, because there has continued to be great feedback and negative feedback. It's just life. Fair enough. And how did do you get this job? Like, is, is, <laughs> do you send in your application? Yeah, <laughs> do you email HR? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, great question. Uh, at, at this level, no. So at this level, uh, your agent submits a resume reel. So in other industries, yeah. when you're on television, you have a paper resume. Um, but in my industry, it, I have a paper resume that shows everything I've done in the past. But then I have clips of me doing this in the past yeah. just because that's what's going to matter, right? The audience doesn't care my paper resume. They want to know what I'm like calling basketball games. So they submit that as well to, to Sean or whoever's making the, the choice of the hire. And then uh, you hope that you're what they're, you hope that you are what they are looking for because television is obviously a visual medium. So right. you may be great, um, but you have to be a right fit for what they're looking for. If my analyst was another blonde woman named Kate, they probably wouldn't have hired me because yeah. they want to be right. representing the audience as much as they can. So they like different puzzle pieces that fit together. Yeah, for sure. And how do you even practice something that, like that? Like, are you in the mirror being like, and Kate Scott is putting on her glasses this morning. Will it help her see better? I don't know. <laughs> That's how I practiced sideline reporting when I was first starting out. So really, sideline reporting was where I started because I didn't think women were allowed to do play-by-play, -play, even though I love sports and stuff. But yeah, when I was first starting out, I would write up verbatim, word for word, what I was going to say. And I would say, okay, well, well welcome to, to San Jose as we're getting set for another San Jose Giants game. You know, Mac Williamson was really good last week. And I would practice over and over again to watch my face. But when it comes to calling games now, yeah, I, I would go sit in the top row at high school games and just call them to myself wow. to practice calling stuff. Uh, then when I got a little bit older, I would thank goodness for YouTube. I mean, not all of it's good, but <laughs> every sport you could ever imagine. So mm -hmm. I was asked to call volleyball. I'd never called volleyball before at the Pac-12 network. And I was like, well, I got a week to figure out how the heck to call this sport. So just queued up volleyball games on YouTube and listened to the announcers wow. and wrote down all these words that I, what, what does this mean? What does that mean? Right. Cause every sport has its own language. As I like to yeah. say, things are called different things. And then once I knew the terminology, then I would put the games on mute and I would try to call them myself. So that was how I practiced to get my first job. And then once you start calling sports, it's just trial and error. You know, you make a lot of mistakes and you listen back to yourself. Oh, I should never use that word again. <laughs> um, so just practice, practice, practice. And so your job though, isn't just calling the game. Like what does your job look like outside of on air time? Yeah. Uh, the majority of my job is actually when I'm not on air, that's the games are the fun part, right? <laughs> same, as, same as the athletes. If I have not prepped for a game, I'm going to be awful calling the game because 
all the information that you hear me talking about when it comes to the players, that is all research I have done on every player on both of the teams that I'm calling that night. Uh, I'm watching previous games of the other teams to see which guy is which if I haven't seen a team before. Okay, those two guys look really similar. similar. How am I going to be able to tell them apart? Okay, which direction does this guy like to dribble right or dribble left so that I can sound really knowledgeable when I'm doing that? Uh, I go to Sixers practices and shoot arounds when I can talk to the players and coaches afterwards to get more insight because that's what is supposed to set me apart from just the fan watching at home. Okay, what Kate needs to show me she's done more work. Uh, so, so much goes into being ready for a game. And then once I'm actually calling it, probably use about 10% of the notes I have on things. Yeah. But you, always have to, you always have to be over-prepared. So yeah, very little of my job responsibilities. And then podcasts like this, getting the word out about what I do and and the Sixers, um, you know, emceeing events, going to nonprofit things, going to galas and being a representative of the Sixers and NBC Sports Philadelphia. And then Philadelphia as a whole, being the voice of a team is so much more than just just calling games. Yeah, for sure. Are the players and the coaches very um, open with you? Did that take some time? Oh yeah, it is. I mean, <laughs> when you meet someone for the first time, are you like, well, let me tell you the most tragic event that has uh, ever happened in my life. Right? I did. The first time we met, she was like, we're best friends now. And I was like, okay. <laughs> it's, well, that's great. It's and a strategy. The three of us then will get along off air because that is a hundred percent me as well. My wife always told me, you have to slow your roll. I knew you're the kid at the playground who was like, hey, do you want to go to the swings? Do you want to go to ice cream? Do you want to be best friends? Yeah. Even though I'm almost 40 years old. But uh, especially when you get to the professional level with players, they understandably are guarded because everybody wants something from them. Um, so I, I always play things very slow. I try to be seen and not heard. Even last year, um, which was my first year with the Sixers, I would be at every practice and every shoot around and every event I could, but very rarely would I go up to the players and ask them something personally. I would just say, hi, how are you doing? But I just wanted them to see me and see my commitment to the craft and commitment to them and for them to hear me call games and form their own opinion. And it really wasn't until, now I made connections with some of the veterans because whether they could tell that I was a trustworthy person, I have no idea why, but if a few guys, I, I created a relationship with um, last year, but uh, we just got back from Charleston training camp for the Sixers and it's going into my second year and got to talk with Joel for truly the first time in more than a, Hey, how are you? Because the superstars, again, yeah. everybody wants something from professional athletes. If you are a superstar, people are pulling you left and right all day, every day. Mm -hmm. um, so I introduced myself and had more conversations. Tobias Harris, another star of ours, we ran into each other at the coffee shop at the hotel and he got married funny. this summer and we both have pit bulls and stuff. So, so I like guys or gals or whoever I'm covering at the time, just to see how much I care about my work and my craft. And then that usually, once they see that, they're like, oh yeah, she, she's really serious about this. She doesn't want anything from me. She's just trying to do the job to the best of her ability. I will happily then tell her something I may not, may not have told somebody else. You've called so many different sports too. And I'm sure that there's so many different personalities in the different <laughs> yeah. sports. Like, do you have to approach people differently? Oh yeah. Yeah. Every sport is different depending on what the sport thinks of itself, how highly it uh -huh. thinks of itself, right? Where the team falls in that sport. If they're a superstar team and uh, they get a lot of press all the time. Uh, you know, we joked all the time when I was covering college sports Man, a lot of the women's teams would give you all access, anything you need. They were so grateful for the coverage. Yeah. So yeah. anything you need. Do you want me to tell you about my most traumatic event in my life? I will happily tell you because it's great propaganda for our program because, yeah. you know, it's a reason for fans to care. Then you get to some other teams and they're their level of self-importance was very high. So uh, yes, I know you are the national broadcast this weekend yeah, for our really. team, but you can't come to practice. It is a closed practice because we don't want you to tweet something out. So it's uh, it's very <laughs> different depending on the team, depending on the sport, depending on the level of self-importance. And often that starts with, with the coach or ownership. Mm -hmm. So I've been really fortunate with Sixers from the day I got here because every NBA team is different. But Doc Rivers said, hey, anything you need, anything I can 
give you or, or show you to help make you better at your job and succeed, just let me know. So another one of the reasons I feel so fortunate to be here in Philly. Awesome. That's awesome. When you are calling these games, I mean, there must be a thousand things, you know, happening at once. Are, <laughs> are, do you think, like, is your brain on autopilot or are you moving like mm. a mile a minute? <laughs> Somewhere in between. Um, when I was first calling games, it's just overwhelming. There's so much going on. You're watching the game. It's loud. You're trying to listen to your, your analyst because if you don't listen to them, you could say the same thing that they just said. And then all the, all of a sudden the audience at home is saying, well, what the heck's going on with Kate? Is she listening to her right. part? Now? Then meanwhile, my producer who none of you can hear is in my ear saying, okay, uh, next out of bounds, we're going to be doing this sponsor and we're two minutes away from the next break zone. And I've got a statistician sitting next to me who's helping keep stats, giving me little note cards that the Cavaliers are five for their first six from three and is handing me notes. And so there, there's so much going on that people mm -hmm. at home don't realize. They just think you're just calling a game. Why, why did you just stumble over your words? Well, because somebody was literally talking into my ear while I was talking. Um, so when you start, oh gosh, it's so overwhelming. But now that I've had all the practice and repetitions, uh, there is a sense of calm because I've done my prep that I talked about before. And now is the fun part. Now I get paid to call a Sixers game with <laughs> Ala, my partner who I love dearly, which is not always the case. Sometimes you have to fake mm -hmm. it because you just mm -hmm. don't, right? We don't all like everybody. Right. But all and I clicked immediately. I love my statistician. I love my producer. So it's really fun. I feel like I'm with my family um, and we're just getting to, to call a Sixers game. Is there anything that you learned like right at the beginning when you were the UC Berkeley Mike man that you're still <laughs> holding on to today? I saw that. that. Like, so I was like, you? we need to bring that up. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, first of all, apologies if you can hear the lawn mowing outside. Uh, it's uh, uh, I've got the same, so that's okay. Okay. My yeah. thanks, thanks to my neighbors. Blood, thanks so. to my neighbors for that one. <laughs> love my love my neighbors though. Um, uh, so for folks who don't know what the heck Mike Man is, that we were people on the microphones leading cheers uh, at Cal football games, at Cal basketball games. Uh, I would go at, to volleyball games and softball games without the microphone and just scream and lead cheers. Um, but I was the, the first woman to do that. So when people asked me, how are you going to deal with the pressure of being the first in Philly? Well, this is, I, I have not purposefully, but I have been the first a lot of times, mm. uh, you know, NFL, NHL, a lot of other things. So, uh, but it all started at, at Cal. Um, and <laughs> you had to apply for that job. Uh, oh. you had to, you had, to tr you had an, they would interview you. There was a bunch of football questions. Okay. If this is the penalty, what is the yardage penalty? Okay. If, if this is the game situation, what cheer would you lead the uh, crowd in at this point? It was really looking back. That's that was hilarious. Funny. And then I actually had to audition during a football game in front of the student section, 10,000 kids. Oh my God. And either, Hard they, pass. either they booed you off the platform that we stood on or they cheered. And then you were in, th then you were in competition because there was a ton of us. So, you know, right. multiple people got cheered and then the previous yell leaders would decide. But I learned through that situation because I asked them, I went down during a football game and said, Hey, I know, auditions and the interviews are coming up. Um, can I apply? And their response was, well, we've never had a woman before. And I said, okay, can I apply? And they said, well, yeah, you're welcome to try, uh, but no oh. guarantees. And I said, yeah, no, no problem. I'm not asking for the job. I, I want to earn it. So that taught me. And I think I've carried that with me all these years later that even if there hadn't been somebody who looked or sounded like me, who did a job before, if given the opportunity, I knew I could do it if I worked hard enough, if I learned the things I needed to learn to be good at that job, that I should go for it. And by the end of my uh, career, <laughs> when other guys would go on the mic, and I can laugh about this because they're dear friends of mine to this day, sometimes the crowd would chant, we want Kate, we want Kate, just because. Oh, amazing. Oh, because my gosh. So energetic. And I think that energy carries over to anybody who's heard Sixers broadcast. I just loved it so much. And it was so much fun. And Cal was actually good then. Aaron Rodgers was like, <laughs> quarterback so you what? know 60,000 60, people what? yeah Hold on, so, let's back up here really yeah. <laughs> that's so cool <laughs> yeah so so I know Aaron uh so he was our quarterback and it was the year the 
should have made it to the Rose Bowl, but then Texas and Mac Brown, screw you, Mac Brown. Anyway, getting way too down the rabbit hole. But I love this. <laughs> it, was a, it was a sellout crowd, and it was we were having a blast. Yeah, and speaking of <clears throat> blazing a trail for women, mm. I know that's a large <laughs> undertaking. <laughs> um, but where where do you think that uh, like women's roles in these major sports leagues? Where do you think that's heading? Because it's it's definitely changing. Yeah. Uh, well, and I think my hire uh, here in Philly is proof of that. I think my buddy, yeah. as I mentioned, Lisa's hire in Milwaukee is proof of that. Uh, I think the fact that I, sh- I should show you our training staff for the Sixers. I should show you our front office for the Sixers. I, I didn't know this, again, because when I was yeah. applying for the job, I was looking at the staff at NBC Philly and like the, the the owners of the Sixers, the the officials in the NBA, like the NBA as a league is so far ahead of the other leagues when it comes to, are you good at your job? Okay, we don't care where you're from or what you look like or who you love. Like we want you because we are a progressive league. So I feel so fortunate to be in this league because of that. But the other leagues are figuring it out too. There, there's more and more women who are qualified for positions uh, that are being offered those positions, which I think is wonderful. So is it slower than we want it to be? Of course, because I think all of us are impatient. But when I think back to 20 years ago, when I was at Cal leaning cheers, I never did play by play when I was in college, because I didn't think that I would ever be allowed to do this. I was a a reporter and an anchor, because that's that's what I saw. That's what I thought was going to be the ceiling of being a woman. So I, I think that we're seeing now that Anything is going to be possible very, very soon. I mean, Becky Hammond just coached the Las Vegas Aces to an WNBA title. She'd been an assistant coach in the NBA. Don Staley, North Philly's own Don Staley, is leading South Carolina's women's basketball program to championships. And anytime those two, and I'm just using them because they're the most well-known names, I think, right now, are talked about, I'm blown away by the men who are tweeting yeah, well, she needs to be the next coach of the San Antonio Spurs. Why isn't Dawn taking over for Doc in Philly? So we're we're getting there. Yeah, and sure. I think one of the things that I don't think I realized until I started hearing your voice um, when the Sixers were on in the background when my boyfriend was watching them <laughs> is, you know, like if you're a girl and you don't grow up with a basketball team or a sports team or whatever, like how are you supposed to get in? Because all of a sudden you can get interested and then if you say you're semi-interested, then a boy's going to question you and say, well, do you know X, Y, Z? And if you yes. don't have all the information, you're done. Exactly. So there's such a barrier to entry mm-hmm. unless you grew up with it. Yeah. And then all of a sudden I heard, I started hearing your voice and I started, and I was like, oh, okay. Like maybe it's not, maybe there, there are becoming more opportunities. And mm-hmm. I- I'm shocking myself myself that I'm actually liking basketball these days. Yes. It used to be just be the bane of my existence <laughs> at all times. <laughs> I love that. Oh my gosh, that makes me so, so happy. Um, and you know, it's funny you bring that up because I've gotten some wonderful notes from other women who have told me similar stories, as in I was I was tasked with having to watch so many Sixers games, and it was kind of one of those tough parts of our relationship. Mm-hmm. But because of you you've made it more palatable for me. And now I feel Mm -hmm. as if I can ask questions. It's hard to like something if you don't understand it, right? Or don't have the storylines, the reasons to follow it. Don't have a player to cheer for. Don't have a team, like you said. So again, the fact that I'm doing what I love and that is allowing the sport or the Sixers or whatever to be more accessible for more people, that makes me so happy. Final question, because we, of course we have to end on this. Um, what has your experience been like with Philly fans? <laughs> <laughs> Please roast the hell out uh, of us. <laughs> no, complete honesty. I love them. I love you all. Because again, getting back to me being a mic man, I freaking love oh. sports. And I, no disrespect to all my friends and family on the West Coast. I love you all. There's a reason that the SEC's motto is, it just means more. There's a reason that Philly has the the moniker that it does across the country. Everybody loves sports here. And and that you don't even say you love sports. You just say, I love, 
I love the Sixers. I love the Phils, right? I love the Flyers. I love the Union. I love the Birds. Like the city shuts down on Sundays. I was so confused last fall when I first got mm -hmm. here, why stores were closed on Sundays. I was thinking, is it a religious holiday <laughs> that I did not realize? Like, are we closer to something? No, it's because the Eagles are playing football, Kate, and nobody cares about anything else in life than if the Birds are going to win or not today. Yeah. So as somebody who has always had that level of passion, uh, like the fact that I now get to be here being the voice of one of those teams is amazing. So has there been some crude comments and some tough moments? Yeah, but the fact that the Wells Fargo Center is sold out in January when we're playing the Sacramento Kings and Joel's not playing because he's using yeah. it as a rest day, like, but it's a sellout and the place is rocking because their Sixers are playing. So uh, I feel, again, so fortunate for so many reasons to be here, but people who give Philly fans a hard time just they're just jealous they're not here because everything everything matters <laughs> it's just why i love sports is to me it is the last like truly communal place where people who don't look like you whom you may never interact with in any other aspect of life because they live in a different area than you that they're different religion that they have different political views than you like sports brings us together in a way that i think very few of anything else does so that's another thing i love about it because it just crosses all boundaries and lines and we're just here cheering on our boys hopefully to a championship this year mm. Um, so to get to be the voice, hopefully, of those memories for so many different people, yeah. uh, because so many people care here in Philly, that's really cool, too. Thank yeah. you so much for for being on here with us today. We this really appreciate it. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you for having me. Uh, I go into every broadcast. There's a little button. Uh, we have a cough button, which we can push if we have to cough or clear our throat or have to talk to somebody, but can't have it go over the air. Or and if the dog is barking at the door. Exactly. <laughs> I needed a talk back button. I'm like, uh, or there's a talk back button, which is how I talk to my producer during a broadcast, but it doesn't go over the air. Um, and at the start of every broadcast, uh, uh, I try to lighten the mood because things can get really crazy and overwhelming mm. and serious. Uh, but I like to push down the talk back button and say, all right, everybody, let's have a really great broadcast. Let's try not to suck. And <laughs> we just leave it at that. So that's Love what it. I told myself before this podcast. All right, Kate, let's have fun. Let's try not to suck. So that's my, that's my motto. <laughs> I like I'm that. I like it. I'm yeah. going to wake up every morning and like say that. <laughs> uh -huh. and, and then chances are you're going to have a great day. There you, you go. <laughs> you didn't tell. There you go. Have you ever <laughs> thought that you pressed that button and you had not pressed that oh, button? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Thankfully, never saying, or sometimes it just doesn't work because the box malfunctions. Right. But thankfully, the longer you work in this industry, you can tell if it's going over the air or not. Got it. Got it. Uh, but but those are terrifying times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, I feel like I would never trust that button just I was off say, the... Can you yeah. believe what that guy just did? And it <laughs> didn't go over the air. So that's good. <laughs> anyway, this was so much fun. Yeah, thank, thank you, you so for much. Having me. Thank you for what you're doing. And uh, go, Sixers. go Sixers. Go Sixers. Thanks to Kate for fitting us into her busy Zoom day. Yeah, I can't imagine that because I'm already exhausted and this was just one. So... I agree. So make sure you tune in next time. We have new episodes of Millennials and for Mentors every other Wednesday. Plus, if you know someone you want us to talk to, shoot us an email at mlfmpodcast at gmail.com. We'll see you next time. Bye.